Hello and welcome to today's video. So we're going to be having a quick look at this integral here. So our numerator is the square root of 1 minus x squared plus sine inverse or arc sine of the square root of 1 plus x on 2. Our denominator is the absolute value of sine of inverse tangent or arc tan of the square root of 1 minus x squared over x. And we are integrating that with respect to x from bounds of 0 to 1. So let's dive right in. So the first thing we note is probably that this looks like an absolutely terrible integral to tackle, and you would be correct. So what we can do first is actually see what we can simplify. So we have a square root, 1 minus x squared, uh, probably not going to work there. Maybe our 1 plus x on 2, we can do something there. Maybe not. The place that we're going to start with is actually in our denominator here. So that inverse tan function. So let's think about what does an inverse tan function represent? Well, all that will find us is an angle. So let's say some angle theta is equal to tan inverse of, well, we had 1 minus x squared all over x. Okay, so that means that this angle here is going to be theta. Now, what happens if I, say, take the tangent of both sides of this equation? Well, that arc tan will disappear and then I'll simply have tan theta equals square root 1 minus x squared over x. But let's go back to our probably like year 8 or year 9 days of mathematics and recall Sokotoa. So we know that tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And so that's exactly what we see here. So O over A, so that means that this side length here is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared. This side length here is simply going to be x. Okay, so now why does that help us? Because I've already mentioned that we can consider tan inverse as simply being an angle. And so now if I write this out as sine of theta, where theta is equal to tan inverse of that bad boy there, well, that's our new denominator. And hang on a second, sine of theta, well, in this triangle here, sine of theta must be equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. And I should also quickly draw in my right angle there. So let's figure out what this hypotenuse is going to be equal to. So just simply Pythagoras' theorem. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So that's going to be x squared plus, well, square root all squared. That, that will now become 1 minus x squared. x squareds will cancel out as such, and all we're left with is that this hypotenuse here is, well, square root of 1, or 1. Okay, fantastic. So now we know our hypotenuse, so that means that we can now rewrite sine of theta, where theta is arctan of square root of 1 minus x squared on x, as simply being equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or simply 1 minus x squared. Oh, there we go. That is going to help us a lot with this problem. Okay, so what we've done now is we've just simplified this pretty much this entire denominator to just be square root 1 minus x squared. Let's keep going on to the next step. So let's quickly rewrite our problem out. So again, integral from 0 to 1, and it was square root of 1 minus x squared plus sine inverse of we had the square root of 1 plus x on 2 uh, dx and all over now, well, the absolute value of 1 minus x squared. So what does an absolute value do? Essentially, all that does, well, we can consider it this way, as it will simply just square whatever is in those signs and then take the square root of that value. That's how the absolute value essentially works, by always finding a positive value. It'll square it, then take the square root. And so doing that, we find that that square will cancel out with that square root. And so all the denominator now becomes is, again, simply the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, and so what we can do now is, well, firstly, we can see that we've got a square root 1 minus x squared on our numerator over here, as we do on the denominator. So we can rewrite this problem now as the integral from 0 to 1 of, well, those cancel out, so we just have 1 dx plus the integral from 0 to 1 of sine inverse of square root of 1 plus x on 2, close that bracket off there, and divide that through 
by 1 minus x squared. Okay, so we're definitely not quite there yet, but we have certainly simplified things a lot. So what well, we know, hopefully, the integral of 1 dx from 0 to 1, we can just rewrite that now as 1, so that's all taken care of for us. Okay, and so now our main problem is integrating this function here. So sine inverse of square root of 1 plus x on 2, all divided through by square root of 1 minus x squared. So now what we're going to do here is we're actually just going to use a substitution technique. So I'm going to go ahead and say let u equal sine inverse of, again, we've got square root 1 plus x on 2. Close that bracket off there. So now what we would like to do is figure out, well, what is du dx? That is our problem. Okay, so u equals sine inverse of that argument there. I'm not going to keep repeating that. So what we can do here is we can say, therefore, that sine of u is equal to square root 1 plus x on 2. There you go, I have repeated it. So what we want to do now is we just want to quickly differentiate both sides with respect to x. And just to illustrate exactly what's going to happen here, I'm going to say let lambda equal to sine of u. So that way now we can see that lambda is equal to the square root of 1 plus x on 2. Okay, so now if I differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x, let's see what we get. So this part here just simply becomes d dx of that square root function there. And on our left-hand side now, well, lambda is a function of u and u is a function of x. So what we now have here is the lambda du du dx, owing to our chain rule. But hang on a second, du dx, that is exactly what we were aiming to find just a moment ago. So what we want to do is we can figure out the lambda du. Well, let's quickly differentiate sine of u with respect to u. We know that that just becomes cos of u. So now we have cos of u times by du dx is equal to, well, taking the derivative of the square root of 1 plus x squared, we'll end up with a 1 on 4 times by the square root of 1 plus x on 2. Okay, so really quickly, solving for du dx, all we need to do is divide both sides by cos of u. So then we can now rewrite du dx is going to be equal to 1 over 4 cos of u times by 1 plus x over 2. Okay, fantastic here. So now let's have a quick look back at what our problem was a moment ago. So we were mainly focusing on this section here. So the integral from 0 to 1 of sine inverse of that argument there, all over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So what we've done now is we've figured out, well, we can replace this function with a u, and then we can rewrite dx now. We'll be able to rearrange this and express that in terms of u. Okay, so let's rewrite our problem now, and let's see what that becomes. So our integral, or that section at least, will now become, well, the integral from... Let's pause for a moment and have a quick think about what will happen to the limits of integration here. So we had from 0 to 1 previously, and now we're saying, well, that u is equal to sine inverse of square root 1 plus x on 2. So what we need to do here is we need to substitute those values of 0 and 1 into that function here, replace x, so that way we can see what the new limits of integration will be. And so when we end up doing that, we find that our lower limit is going to be pi on 4, and our upper limit is going to be pi on 2. Okay, so those are our new limits of integration. Now let's see what does the problem reduce down to be. So that sine inverse function, that just becomes now a u. So we have u over, and on our denominator we still had that square root of 1 minus x squared, and now we had dx, but what we can do here is just simply rearrange this equation to solve for dx, and so now we know that we can express dx simply as 4 cos of u times by 1 plus x on 2 in a square root du. Okay, I'm just going to separate that out there. All right, so it's looking a lot nicer, and we're almost there, I promise you. But there's one little thing that we need to take care of first, and that is the fact that, well, we've still got x's here that we are integrating this whole function with respect to u, so we know that that's a little bit of an issue there. 
And we also have cos of u, and we don't know what cos of u is. So what we need to do is, again, we actually need to refer back to, well, what was u equal to? u was equal to the sine inverse of the square root of 1 plus x on 2. I'm going to rewrite that now. Instead of writing it underneath 1 square root sine, I'm going to rewrite that underneath 2. And so again, using the same sort of trick that we did earlier with our tan inverse function, we're now going to create a triangle. So down here, we can say that we now have some triangle. Again, right angle triangle, I should say where we have now that angle u, since we know that the sine inverse of anything will always return us an angle. So then we said sine of u is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, again, Sokotoa. So that means now that our opposite is going to be the numerator, so the square root 1 plus x, and our hypotenuse is going to be that square root 2. So now we have, again, square root 1 plus x and square root 2. And now, just using Pythagoras' theorem, we see that this unknown side length here is going to be square root 1 minus x. All right, so now we actually know what cos of u is going to be equal to. So cos of u adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can now replace that, that cos of u there, with the square root of 1 minus x over square root 2. So I might just quickly rewrite what we've just found a little bit more neatly for us. So now we have that this is, again, the integral from pi on 4 to pi on 2. And now we're working with u over square root of 1 minus x squared. Then we had that 4 in there, so we can actually take that out the front. And then we had a square root of 1 minus x over 2 and a square root of 1 plus x over 2. Okay, and that was all du. So really quick, we can use the difference of two squares to rewrite our denominator now as simply square root 1 minus x times by square root 1 plus x. And well, now this is looking a little bit exciting here. We see that square root 1 minus x cancels out with that over there square root 1 plus x cancels out with that there, and then we're left over with square root of 1 on 2 times by square root 1 on 2, those multiply together to just give us 1 over 2. We take that out the front, and that just becomes now a 4 on 2 out the front, or more simply, that changes to be a 2. Now, let's quickly see what we've got. So that all disappears, and all we're left with is u du from pi on 4 to pi on 2. So, really quickly, let's finally solve this problem. Now, integrating that, we'll see that we get u squared over 2. That 2 will cancel out with the 2 out the front. And we're left, finally, with u squared taking values from pi on 2 and pi on 4. And so we find that it's going to be equal to pi squared on 4 minus pi squared on 16. Let's just quickly tidy that up. So we'll times both top and bottom by 4 over here. And so then we find that our answer here is going to be 3 pi squared. Okay, and that's it. So what we've done is, firstly, a lot of work, but we've brought it down from being what looks like an absolute hell of an equation. We use some basic trigonometric ideas that you probably know from maybe your early years in high school. If we were able to simplify our denominator, then all we needed to do was use a substitution, differentiate, use another triangle to then rewrite that a little bit nicer. And let's also quickly not forget that we also had a one that we need to quickly add on to our answer here. And so our final answer now we see will simply become one plus three pi squared over 16. I just realized I've forgotten that there. Okay, and that's it. So if you have enjoyed today's video, then please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then consider subscribing. And if you have any other recommendations or suggestions or possibly other methods that you would have tackled this problem with, I'm sure there must be a lot of other methods out there, then please leave them down in the comments below. As always, I hope you have a great day and stay curious.